at last, we're actually going to create a spreadsheet, including a function and a formula and a chart. And my goodness, we are going to be covering a wide range of core spreadsheet functionality in this video. And I really, really want you to do it with me. So I really would like you to pause and rewind as much as you need to in order to follow along. Otherwise, trust me, it's going to be a bit of a blur for you. Although, having said that, I suppose you could watch it through first to get the overview of what we're going to do and then watch it again, pausing as you need to in order to do it with me. But anyway, the first thing I am going to do is to zoom in a little bit on our spreadsheet. So bottom right hand corner, you can either drag the little slider or click the 100% there to choose a particular percentage. But I'm just going to click the plus to take us up to 160%, which I think is going to be about right for recording. And I'd like you to imagine that we're going to capture some sales figures. We'll just do a generic businessy type of example. And I'd like to imagine that we've got a store in Paris and another store in Milan. Now, I have just started typing Paris in the cell that was selected and this cell is called cell A1 because it's in column A row 1 and I want to put Milan in cell B1. Now having just typed in Paris I can either press enter on my keyboard which would take me down a cell or if instead I had pressed the tab key it would take me one cell to the right so that's actually going to suit me better on this occasion so let me just type in Milan. And if I want to apply some formatting to both of those two cells, well, I can select them by clicking and dragging from the middle of one cell to the middle of the other cell. You can see that they are highlighted or selected. And then I can use the usual tools that you would expect to make them bold or a different color. You get the idea. I'm sure you've done this sort of thing before. So let's make them a little bit bigger, or I could have used these buttons to make them bigger, smaller, whatever. Change the font style, all of the usual types of options that you would expect. So those are the two stores that we're capturing sales figures from or whatever it is. But then I realize I want to actually indicate the particular products I'm capturing figures for and oh, I should have moved these along a bit. So I want to add an extra column to the left of column A. Well, we can do that. So to select a whole column, you can see I can click the column heading and wherever I'm clicked, either in a column or with a column selected, if I choose the option to insert a new column and there are many different places we can get to that option. I must admit, I like the context sensitive menu. So if you control click the heading, it'll give you this little menu, but you could have looked for the option on the home ribbon tab or even the insert menu up there at the top. But anyway, I'm gonna choose insert from this little shortcut menu here and it'll give me a brand new column to the left of wherever I was clicked. So that's exactly what I want. So let's imagine I'm capturing sales figures for widgets and what's it. <laughs> and let's imagine I'd like these headings to be formatted in the same way as these headings here. And I can't remember exactly what shade of blue I chose or whatever it was. So I'm going to use the good old format painter, which you might have come across before. But the idea is you click on the cell or the thing that you like the formatting of that you want to repeat and then top left hand corner look for the paintbrush to suck up that formatting and then spit it out onto the cells where you want that formatting to be repeated so that's matching and looking good. I now need to enter in some figures into these four cells here. And of course, you can just click on them and start typing the number. But I've got a little tip for you. Let's imagine just for testing purposes, we want to quickly put the same value into every cell. So I've just clicked and dragged to select all four cells. And to put the same value into every cell in the selection, well, just type the number and then press Control Enter and it'll put the same value into every cell. Perfect. And while they are selected, let's add some more formatting. But rather than the appearance of the text in terms of the color and the font and whatnot, I'm going to add some formatting to control how the number is displayed. This is what we call number formatting. So if you look on this part of your ribbon, you'll see that I could add a currency style. And because I'm in the UK, rather than dollars, I'm going to choose English pounds. So if I click that, then it's applied some number formatting to those values. Brilliant. Now, clearly, I want to add these up. So this is where Excel really comes into its own, because not only is it this wonderful grid that we can lay out information and do all sorts of varied tasks. One of its biggest powers is the functions and the formulas that can do calculations and all sorts of things for us. So I want to add up these two figures here to give me a total. And I'd like to take you through a basic formula to start with, bearing in mind there is an awful lot more to know about formulas and functions than we can possibly cover in this quick start video. But this, don't forget, is just the basics. So we're just going to do one easy example of a formula and one easy example of a function and you'll see the difference. But anyway, functions and formulas are ways of manipulating your figures and your data and they will always start with an equals. So that puts Excel into kind of like a 
calculation mode. And let's do an easy formula to start with, whereby I'm going to be saying I want to add up that cell. So I'm pointing at the cell and you can see that it's put the cell reference in the formula. So that's B2. But I want to add it up. So I'm going to type a plus with that cell. So equals B2 plus B3. That's my formula. When I press enter, it's going to give me the correct answer. When I click the cell, I can see the answer in the cell. But if I look up here in this area, which is called the formula bar, I get to see the formula that's kind of behind the answer, if you like. So I can see what's been typed in. And if I just press enter to come out of that in the cell itself, I see the result of the formula. So that has worked perfectly well. That's a formula, that cell plus that cell. And I can use the other mathematical operators to do subtracting. You know, I just use a little dash or dividing. I'd use the front slash or multiplication. I'd use the little asterisk as a times by all of those mathematical formulas. But of course, this type of formula, although it worked just fine, if I was adding up 50 cells, it's going to get rather cumbersome, isn't it? B2 plus B3 plus B4 plus B5. So there is a better way to do many of these things in the form of functions. And a function is where we wrap up a calculation into a prepackaged function. And Excel, as you will learn if you continue your Excel journey, has got a lot of prepackaged functions for you. And it won't come as any surprise that one of those prepackaged functions is a sum. So I'm going to delete this formula that we've just put in. So if you want to delete anything, you just click the cell and press delete on your keyboard. And this time, if you look on your home ribbon tab towards the right hand side, you will see this button just over here. There's a drop down which will give you quick access to some very simple functions which you can play with. But we're going to use a sum. And when I choose that, you'll see what it's doing. It's put in the sum function. It's starting with an equals because we know it always has to start with an equals. But rather than summing that cell plus that cell, it's saying I'm just going to sum that lot. <laughs> And it's tingling around the group of cells that it's going to add up together. So that group of cells could be a huge group of cells or just two, as it is in this case. So that looks perfect. I'm going to press enter. And of course, it gives me the correct answer, doesn't it? And because this is a function and the same with the simple formula, if any of these numbers were to change, so let's change that to, ooh, to just 50 pounds, then of course, the result, the total changes as well. And again, I'm clicked on the cell so I can see the result. But up here is where I see the actual function in this case that was typed in to give me that result. And you can probably already tell me what the function's going to be for the equivalent in the Milan column. It's going to be summing C2 to C3. And if we had more figures here, it would be summing D2 to D3, E2 to E3. So there will be a pattern for the contents of that function as we progress through this spreadsheet. And Excel is very good at continuing the patterns for us. We're not strictly copying that function because we don't want B2 and B3 added up in here. We want C2 and C3 added up. So to get Excel to continue the pattern for you, you've got to be quite alert to what your mouse pointer looks like. Now, can you see that my mouse pointer, as I move it around, is like a white cross? But as I hover over this little corner, can you see it changes to a thin black cross? That blob in the corner is called the fill handle. And when I hover over that and click and drag, I am filling the formula to the next step of the pattern. And if I click it and look up in the formula bar, fantastic. C2 to C3 is the range of cells, the group of cells that the sum function is applying itself to. Now, because these are totals, we might want to separate them out in some way with a border. So we can do that. I've selected the cells. This is my borders button. So I could choose, for example, um, maybe a top border running along the top of those cells. And you may or may not be able to see this terribly clearly. It's a black line. And you might think, well, that wasn't that exciting. But I have to tell you that these grey lines that you can see are just grid lines. They won't print. And if we go to the View ribbon tab and turn off those grid lines, that's where you can see that black line that we have just added. I think most people most of the time will use Excel with the grid lines switched on. But if you are playing around with your borders, it's useful to see the effect without the grid lines switched on because they're not going to print. So if you're adding borders to make it look nice for printing, then it might be useful to hide those grid lines. But then I decide I don't like those borders. So don't forget, we've got an undo button. If I click undo once, it'll step me through turning the grid lines on and off, step through again, and it will remove those borders. And what I'm going to do instead is apply a cell style, which is a package of formatting. 
So I've selected those cells again, back on the Home Ribbon tab, over towards the right hand side, we've got this button here for Cell Styles, which as you can see is all sorts of shading and borders and all sorts of things bundled up into a, into a cell style. And I like this one over here on the right hand side, it's a total style. So if I choose that, it'll not only add a bit of formatting in terms of making the text bold, but it's also, if you can see there, added a thin line at the top and a double line at the bottom in a blue colour. And for maximum effect, let's see how that looks without the grid lines. Huh, nice. If you want to apply formatting to a whole row or column, then simply click in the heading of the row or column. You can just see the uh, grey shading there. And then you could, for example, say, oh, let's make the background shading of the cell bright yellow. So I can see that. And if you're just experimenting, then the good old undo button or command Z or control Z will take you back a step. And if we want to adjust column widths, well, just move your mouse between the two columns to stretch the columns to make them wider or shrink them to make them narrower. And you can do the same for rows, but I think that's less common. So let me just undo that. And we talked about adding extra columns. So the way I did it was to control click or right click on the column heading to insert an extra column. We could do the same for extra rows if we wanted to. But look, down the bottom of the screen, we can add extra sheets. That's kind of like an extra page in your Excel workbook. So down the bottom corner, you can see that we're in sheet one. If I click a plus, then oh, I've got a brand new blank sheet to play with. But uh, we'll just stick with one sheet for now. And then finally, let's pop in a chart to display these figures in a more graphical way. So the rule when you're creating a chart is you must select your titles, so the Paris, Milan, widgets and what's it's, so that the data is appropriately labelled on the chart, but do not select your totals because that's going to distort the chart because they will be much bigger figures than the figures you're trying to depict. So I've selected the appropriate data. On the Insert Ribbon tab, you'll see I've got quite a few charting options. And as with everything, there's an awful lot more to know. But I would say if you just want to pop in a quick chart and you're not quite sure what to choose, then try the recommended charts. If you click the drop down, it will show you the charts that it suggests with a preview of your actual data. So let me choose this one, for example. So widgets are shown in blue, what's it's are shown in orange. There's the Paris figures, there's the Milan figures. I can overtype this with a title. So let's just put in European figures. And if these numbers were to change, let's just make a change there. Not only, of course, does the total change because we used a function there, but also the chart will change. And let me just, for perfection's sake, move that chart into a slightly different position on the spreadsheet. And wow, I'm pretty happy with that. So my goodness, we packed a lot in there, but that really is the basics of some of the core functionality that Excel can deliver to you. There's more to learn. And over the next couple of videos, we'll talk a bit more about saving and printing this spreadsheet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Oh, and also if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free, yes, free, a free trial.